So uh, I know uh, there's been a theme happening, and it's not a theme because your whole church is focused on the Holy Spirit. And awesome, Pastor Jeff, for just guiding the church into this place of life and health. And so uh, I thought I'd just share a a couple of messages this morning uh, over this next two services. I'm going to preach two different messages. Uh, If you want to hang around for the second one, if you like the first one, which you haven't determined yet, but if you like the first one and you want to hear something completely different, feel free to uh, come back to the second. But this first message, I want to speak about the Holy Spirit and and the work of the Holy Spirit in you. In the second service, I want to speak about the work of the Holy Spirit through you. But we, we can't talk about that second topic, the Holy Spirit through you, until we talk about the work of the Holy Spirit in you. Because it begins with the work on the inside. And, and really, you know, there's much of the body of Christ that, you know, there's a whole section of the body of Christ that actually teach against the Holy Spirit. How crazy is that? You know, there's p- parts of the body of Christ that, that, that experience the Holy Spirit, but it's all a little strange, a little weird, what have you. But I believe the Holy, it, it, without the Holy Spirit, we have no Christian life. Uh, the Holy Spirit guides us to Jesus. The Holy Spirit works in us. It, it is, there is no church without the Holy Spirit. It, 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 is, it, is the, it is the work of the Spirit that actually gets us to this place. It's because of the Holy Spirit you're sitting in this room this morning. And, and the, the pathway, the unique journey of the Holy Spirit is unique to you. And, and, and He has a plan for you and He's guiding you. And He hasn't finished with you yet. Uh, I've, I, I've called this message uh, Under Construction. If we can turn to those, uh, that, that screen there. Uh, and and the, the specific message is doors. Because God... The Holy Spirit uses specific doors. If, you, if we're under construction, I'll share a scripture with you, uh, which is in Philippians, 6, in Philippians 1 verse 6, in the message version, says this, there's never been the slightest doubt in my mind that the, work, that the God who started this great work in you will keep at it and bring it to a flourishing finish on the day that Jesus Christ appears. So the work of God, and I know another great scripture that your pastor talks about a lot is Ephesians 2.10. For we are His workmanship, creating Christ Jesus to do good work for good works. And so, so God, we are His workmanship. The Holy Spirit is at work in you. You are under construction. Everybody who's under construction, put their hand out right now. So it's not like, well, I've arrived, I go to church every week, and like the work of God has got, work of God is done. No, God is still working at you. Your greatest days are ahead of you yet if we open our hearts to the work of the Holy Spirit. So He's, he's working in us. He's working at us. He's working through us. And this construction business that God is into, He uses things. He uses certain materials. He uses the windows. He uses, He puts floors in our life. He puts ceilings in our life. But He also uses these things called doors. One of the key things that God causes us to grow is he puts doors in front of us. Because if you can imagine, if, if your current Christian experience is this awesome Indian rug up here. Is this an Indian rug? This is an awesome Indian rug. Some of the greatest preachers in the world have stood on this rug. I feel the anointing on it right now. Hopefully I don't diminish the anointing. And, and so, but, but God has more for you. And so the experience in God, there's more ahead of you than you're currently experiencing. He wants to expand your Holy Spirit territory. He always constantly wants to do that. But to get to that place, if this other stage represents, or other part of the stage represents the new thing that God has for you, it's not like you just walk into it. He uses doors so that you walk through those doors into this new space. And this version of you is better than this version of you. This version of you is bigger than this version of you. This version of you has, has the presence of God greater than this version of you. So what I want to do is just talk to you this morning briefly about five doors that the Holy Spirit uses to enlarge our lives and to get us into that space. Who wants to go over there? Anyone? All right, come and, come and join me over here. No. And so there are several doors that God uses. The first door, the most important door, is the door of Jesus. Jesus is a door. He's not, just, he's not just someone we believe in. Actually, as we come to Him, He is a door to our future. And, and He even calls Himself a door. John 10, 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And if I can encourage you, keep going back to the door of Jesus. If, you, if you're struggling, if you feel hemmed in, if you feel constrained, if you feel depressed or 
or, or, or control, if you, whatever you're feeling, Jesus is always the door. In fact, if I gave you no other door, if I didn't even talk about the other four doors, it wouldn't matter. Let's just keep talking about the door of Jesus. And it's the Holy Spirit's job, sorry, it's the Holy Spirit's job to guide you to Jesus to get you through that door of Jesus. The Holy Spirit doesn't focus on Himself. The Holy Spirit points you to Jesus. And so it keep coming back to Him. And of course, what is Jesus? Ultimately, He is the cross. And, and as we keep going back to the cross, then we keep getting freed and delivered and so on. And so, and then unless we experience the fullness of the cross, the fullness of what that cross represents, then, then we can't take other people to the cross as well. And so our experience with that is awesome. So keep going back to the door of Jesus. And once you go through that door, maybe for the first time, and I remember the first time I, I experienced the door of Jesus in my life, and it never comes predictably. It's not like you're walking through life and you, and you say to yourself, you know what, I think I'll walk through the door of Jesus. It's, I think it's time to do that. No, 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 God sneaks up on you because He's preparing you. You know, I've, I have this message that I've, I've preached about for years that God takes a long time to move suddenly. <laughs> Anyone experience that? God's a God of the suddenly, but He takes a long time to move suddenly. But when he moves, he moves quickly. And, and uh, years ago, 19, late 1970s, uh, I was at university and, and studying. And, and, and my sister, who's older than me, uh, came back from one of her many trips overseas. She was a hippie in the 60s. Anybody remember the 60s? If you remember the 60s, you actually weren't there. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and she came back from one of her many jaunts. And she said, I've, and she used to get into all sorts of things. And, th and this particular trip she came back, I've found Jesus. And I'm like, yeah, right. You've found all sorts of things. And this is, this is just one of the things that you found. It's going to be a short-term thing. But, and she said, no, I found Jesus. So she invited me to this meeting in Sydney Town Hall in 1978. And it was 2,000 people in this meeting. A, a Catholic, Jesuit, born-again Spirit-filled priest was, those, all, all those words do go together, by the way. <laughs> Catholic, Jesuit, born again, spirit-filled priest was preaching. And I'm like, what's going on here? And they all started singing and worshiping in the Spirit. And I'm, like, I'm like, who are all these people? I said to my sister, where'd they all come from? She said, they've been around for thousands of years. And, and, and I said, some of them look like they have. <laughs> and... Halfway through the meeting, my sister turned to me and said, what do you think? And I went, I'm in. I believe. It's like at that moment, a divine moment of revelation took place. And it was like, it was like I stepped through the door of Jesus. One moment, I didn't believe. One moment, I didn't see. One moment, I'm like, whatever, who are all these weird people? The next moment, I'm through the door of Jesus. I'm like, faith came into my heart. Grace came into my heart. A, a warm, crazy feeling came into my life. And at that moment, I walked through that door. And, 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 and since then, then, but the thing is with Jesus, you got to keep walking through the door of Jesus. And on the other side of that door, there's this whole life that I didn't, didn't even know existed. I thought it was just about struggling in life and just trying to make it. But over here in Jesus, He reveals all these things that He has for your life. I mean, I won't go into all the things, but read Ephesians chapter 1 sometime. Where it talks about, you know, whole Ephesians 1 is in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. But when you're in Christ, he reveals, Paul prays this thing, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Basically saying so that you may know what you've got in Christ. That, that you may know the hope to which he's called you. This glorious inheritance in the saints. And he's incomparably p power to us who believe. I, I mean, that what we have in Christ, on the other side of that door of Jesus is a life that's so incredible. And the Holy Spirit wants to lead you into that thing. Anybody want to get more inspired about Jesus? Anyone? It's like crazy. All right. And we could, we could talk about that all morning. And, and we, if we had the time, we would. But tell you what, just keep walking through the door of Jesus. Keep discovering what's on the other side of that experience. Because the fullness in Christ never ends. What, what God has provided for you, what He has given to you, and the life that He has for you is absolutely incredible. Uh, second door. There's, a, there's another door. The door of new thinking. Sometimes the Holy Spirit leads you into a door because perhaps, if I can just suggest this morning, that perhaps the life 
that the Holy Spirit wants to lead you into is limited not by your spiritual life, but by your thinking life. Because wow. it only takes one new thought to open up a brand new part of your life. Maybe it's a, a, a new thinking around parenting, a new thinking around business, a new thinking around something. You know, years ago, there was a great company in America called Blockbuster. <laughs> and they were very successful, as you know. Many of you probably have studied this in, in the corporate world. They, they were worth billions of dollars. They had, I think, maybe 2,000 stores in America. Well, 18 months ago, they closed their last store because they refused to step through the door of new thinking. Wow. Another company that was a few years ago that was coming up through the ranks was another company you may have heard of called Netflix. <laughs> and Netflix were, were discovered a new, a new way, a new way of doing business, a new way of doing, looking at the screen. And they said, live streaming or, or, or streaming uh, content is, is the future. And Blockbuster said, why would we do that? We're the most successful video company in the world. I mean, even using the word video is like, is like crazy, old school. And, and, and so they said, and in fact, Netflix tried to buy Blockbuster. And they said, forget it. They just laughed them out of the, of the conference room. And so, and then eventually the market changed, but not the market change, life change, thinking change. What, 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 what one new thought maybe is the Holy Spirit trying to lead you through to get you into a new future? I shared with the, some of the leadership team last night that in Acts 10, Jesus gave Peter a brand new thought. He gave him the thought is that the, that, that, Toss that over there. <laughs> Do you see that? You know, <laughs> I've, I've been working on. <laughs> That's my new hairdo. <laughs> oh, there you go. Thank you. Um, what the the Lord revealed a new thought to Peter about that the gospel isn't limited to the Jews; it's actually open to the Gentiles. But it was a contrary to his tradition. But that was the tradition that God gave them. But see, God sometimes begins to reveal, new, he's, God's in a new wine and he's in the new wine skins. But the new wine doesn't come first. The new wine skin comes first. Maybe a new structure, maybe a new idea, maybe a new thought. What one thought maybe is ahead of you that God wants to open up, allow the Holy Spirit to maybe open up something brand new into your life. And God will can do that. Okay, no, door number three, I'm moving through this quickly. The door of expansion. Sometimes God puts in front of you an opportunity to grow and expand. Joshua chapter 1 verse, in the first few verses there, it talks about wherever that you place the sole of your feet, that, that I'll give you. Sometimes God wants us to take a step. He wants to take us, a, us to take a risk to get out and do something new. Sometimes the, the next stage, the new version of you, is you stepping through the door of expansion and taking a risk into a new place. Maybe it's that, you finally go and ask that girl out. Maybe it's go and do the course. Maybe apply for the new job. The, the new version of you is in a, sometimes in a decision and a risk that's over here. But fear and anxiety and all those things stop us from going into this place. But the Holy Spirit's trying to usher us in through this door going, take the risk. Because the new version of you is on the other side of that risk. Come on, who's with me this morning? And, and, and there's so many things. Isaiah 54, a key verse in our movement. Enlarge the place of your tent. I love that. Let the curtains of your habitations be stretched. I love the place that says enlarge the place of your tent. It doesn't say enlarge your tent. Enlarge the place of your tent. Enlarge the footprint of your tent. God wants to enlarge. He wants to increase the footprint of our existence sometimes. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you will spread abroad to the right and to the left. We're meant to take our cities. We're meant to take our communities. But unless we come bigger people on the inside by the, by the door of opportunity that God has put in front of us, God puts those things there so we will become larger people. Years ago, um, in the first eight years of our marriage, I think we moved nine times in our house. Who thinks that's a really dumb idea? <laughs> Well, we, did, we, did some, we didn't really much choice. We're renting, and then we'd, we'd fix the place up a bit, and the owners would go, wow, this place looks great. I think we'll put it on the market. You know? I'm like, this isn't, this isn't working for us here. And, and we just kept on moving and moving, and I got sick of it. I got frustrated. Sometimes frustration is your greatest friend. 
Sometimes frustration is the greatest motivation to changing something in your life. And I got up one Saturday morning and I said to Bernie, today we're going to buy a house. Today we're going to buy a house. It was just a new thought. I'm like, we're going to buy a house. And Bernie said to me, I'm sure I think I remember her saying this. She said to me, I love it when you talk tough. (laughs) I'm pretty sure she said that. And uh, so she got all excited and she said, and she grabbed the local newspaper and found an ad in the local newspaper, house for sale, 50 yards from beach. And I'm like, that's the will of God right there. That's, <laughs> there's only one problem. We had no money. It was a minor issue, but it was, it was a bit of a, but actually it was a big issue. We went and checked out the house. We, we loved it straight away. It was an old, older place, but it was close to the beach. It had a lot of potential. And I said to the real estate agent, we'll take it. Because the thing is, the door, this door of expansion, it's never like, it's never laid at you. It's never like, here it is. It always requires you to take this step into this thing, and maybe a few steps to get into this thing, because God is trying to expand us and enlarge us to become bigger people. So I said to the real estate agent, we'll take it. And I said to him, what do I do now? Because I'm completely a novice at this. And he looked at me like I was an idiot. And he said, you need $1,000 just to to, to show me that you're serious and to hold it. I said, no problem. So I called mum. <laughs> I said, mum, can you lend me $1,000? She said, what for? I said, I, I want to buy a house. And of course, here's the deal. When you start taking risks that are good risks, people start to conspire with you to accomplish that thing. Then I, I gave the guy $1,000 and I said, what do I do now? He looked at me like I was a second idiot. And he said, you go to the bank and you borrow the money. So I thought, okay, how hard can that be? So I went to... First bank, second bank, third bank. We were young pastors, fourth bank, fifth bank, sixth bank. I think we don't know how many banks we went to. They all laughed me out the door. I spoke to a friend of mine who was in finance and bank. He said, no, 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 you're doing it wrong. So you dress like this, you you, you do this. And he gave me a few tips and I went to the next bank. He said, yeah, we'll lend you the money. I'm like, awesome. And they said, you need $27,000 deposit in the account by Thursday. This is Monday. I said, no problem. I said, I'll just get transfer it from one of my other accounts. And, uh, and uh, we had no money. And I called Bernie. And I said, do you want the good news or the bad news? And I uh, said, they're lending us the money. This, the bad news is they want $27,000 by Thursday. She said, what's going to happen? I said, God's going to come through. And I won't go through all the details, but within, within about 72 hours, we had $27,000 in our account, which was awesome. Now... Listen, let me, let me just to get a little, a little caveat around this. That may, that may not be your story. Don't say, well, Pastor Mark said when you know. But the point is that that door of opportunity was in front of us. It took frustration to walk through that door. But we, we got in that place and we bought this house. It was amazing. On the way to picking up the key to, to when we purchased our first home, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, the faith that I grew in you to get this house is not, was not for the house. It was, it's for the future. 18 months later, God called us to New York to go and plant a church because the step of enlargement today is for another step of enlargement in front of you. But unless, unless we take that step, unless we take that next step, you won't know what the step beyond that is. A Holy Spirit's trying to enlarge you to make you a bigger person. God's, and he's doing that in our lives. And of course, the crazy thing was, it's just a side story, we sold that house for twice what we paid for it. Uh, a couple of years after we bought it, we moved to New York, we bought a house over there. Friends of ours who bought that house, uh, uh, they were friends and they're still friends, uh, uh, they bought it. They sold it another three years after that for twice what they paid for it. They went and planted a church in another part of Australia. Out of that one step of enlargement, one door of enlargement, two churches were birthed. Hundreds of thousands of dollars were made. I'm telling you what opportunity is in front of you right now if we're just willing to take that step. Amen. Amen. Come and give a lot of hand. It's awesome. Okay. All right. Fourth door, the door of calling. Everybody say this after me. I, I am, am called. called. See, it's, it's not just me, the guy up there with the jeans and the funny white shoes. I'm not, now you're all looking at my shoes. <laughs> but, but it's not just I'm, I'm called, but so are you. God has a calling on your life. You're not, 
God doesn't call Christians to be pew sitters. He calls Christians to be ministers of the gospel. Every single believer is called by God. And God puts in front of us a door of the calling. And it doesn't look amazing at first. It's not like, you know, sometimes people are in meetings and they're expecting this prophecy. And it's like, I see nations. I see an apostle to the nations. It doesn't, it very rarely comes like that. Often the door of calling is this very small door. It's about, it's about this big. And we've got to really get, get quite small and just humble to go through this thing. Because it requires submission and a servant heart and what have you. And so God is in the process of, of calling you and developing you for the call that God has for you. The, the, the future of this amazing church is, is through the gifts that every one of us are, are meant to bring to this thing. And I want to talk to you this morning and say, you are called. You are meant to bear fruit. You are meant to affect people and lives. You are meant to affect the city of Atlanta. Come on, who's with me this morning on that one? The God has called you to do that. But the call of God, this doorway is, is a step. They're small things. Some, some of the doors of, of calling are developmental doors. They're things that God gets you to do that you won't do forever. They're just part of the process. In the early days, when we were first part of the church, Pastor Phil asked Bernie and I to run and develop, to develop and run a drama team. I'm like, are you talking to me? Like that was the most foreign thing to me. I am so now I'm actually quite naturally quite shy. I have no background in that area. But he said, I want you and Bernie to run and develop a, a drama team. I'm like, this is the craziest thing. I said, okay, well, I've been asked to do it. Let's do it. So we, we'd practice all these Christian skits and we did all this stuff. There was no Google back then. We just had to, I don't know where we found them, but we found them and we did this stuff. And then one day, Pastor Phil calls me and says, we're doing an outreach to one of the local surf clubs up the road. And I want you and your team to put on their first Christian drama. I'm like, oh, no. And he says, Bill Gola Surf Club. That's my surf club. And we started a board riders club in that one. And I'm like, oh no, please, Lord, don't let any of my old surf buddies be in that meeting. <laughs> I rocked up, we rocked up, and then in the back row, about 10 of my old surfing buddies all standing there with their arms folded. I can't even believe they came. I'm like, God, this, you have a terrible sense of humor right now. <laughs> so the skit that we did, I had to carry a sack halfway through the meeting and walk up the aisle and as I was walking up the aisle be screaming my burden my burden oh my burden and there was a guy playing Jesus up the front I'd throw the sack at his feet and Jesus took that sack off my life and I was dancing around going I'm free I'm free I'm free it was the worst Christian skit in in history none of my friends got saved in fact, I think they've been turned off church ever since. <laughs> but you know what? Pastor Phil turned to Pastor Chris and said about me, I think there might be a preacher in there somewhere talking about me. And, like, and so that, that particular door of my life of calling did not grow the kingdom once, one bit. <laughs> But it did something in me. It put a, it put a courage and a boldness and, a, and, and was the beginning of the breaking of the fear of man in my life. By the way, it's not broken yet fully. Uh, so, but other things. I mean, there, there are destiny doors. Some are developmental doors. Some are destiny doors in this area of calling. And so when Pastor Phil asked me to run the first, one of the first connect groups and talked about last, that last night. And that, that shaped us. The things we're doing globally now, we have 13 regions, we're in 59 countries, nearly 600 churches. Right now across the world, 120,000 people worshiping God in C3 churches. That all began six, when, we, when Pastor Phil asked us to run a connect group with six people. Everything we learned in growing that connect group is I'm now applying 40 years later in this process. You don't know how powerful those initial tiny doors are as you keep growing and that God has a door of calling in front of you and it doesn't always look what you think it will look like. But God is going to do great things in your life. We could talk about that forever. It's awesome. Okay. Uh, the last door is the door of trial. If I could have the band up right now, that'd be great. The door of trial. Door of trial. Everybody say trial. I hate talking about this point. I can't even believe I'm preaching this. 
But God puts a door in front of all of us. And some of you, maybe you're at that door right now. And there's a challenge, a trial, a struggle. I mean, we've all got struggles all the time. Every one of us have issues. But sometimes it's a serious one. Sometimes it's a type of one that you know is just more than the average struggle. It's something that, 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 that God has, is going to have to get you through. There's an amazing scripture in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 3. It says this, I will give you treasures hidden in darkness, secret treasures. And sometimes the, your future, what we do when the door of trial comes, I don't know about you, this, this is me. When I can see this thing, or I'm in this, at the edge of this trial, I dig my heels and I'm like, I, I go screaming and kicking, avoiding because I don't want to go through that thing. Come on, who's with me? Anyone that's like, ah, like, oh, no. but God says, no, come. I shared with the guys last night that even Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The Holy Spirit is more with you in the trial than He is with you when you're not in the trial. The Holy Spirit leads you into that place. And if the Holy Spirit's leading you into that place, you've got to know that God is with you in the middle of that trial. Jesus is the fourth man in that fire. And as you go through that fire, God is with you. And there are, there are treasures hidden in darkness. There are things that you discover in that trial that you would not discover otherwise. There is growth and expansion and a new version of you that will come out the other side of that trial stronger, healthier, more empowered than is if you didn't go through that trial in the first place. You know, a few months ago, actually 15 months ago, we were actually in the States and we're flying back to Sydney and we... Just before we jumped on the plane, we, we knew our daughter was having a few symptoms. Our daughter is, we've got three kids, all married. We just actually had our seventh grandchild just three weeks ago, which is awesome. And uh, so praise God for that. And our, our youngest daughter, Sasha, is married to a wonderful young man, Nathan. They've got three, three young girls, so the three of our granddaughters. And uh, she had just given birth not long ago, prior to that to her third daughter she was having some symptoms and we, we knew she, that she was going for this particular test and we jumped on the plane and we had this burden we're just like God help just pray for Sash and we just we felt we, we felt very burdened by, by this particular knowledge that she was going through. so we didn't know we traveled for maybe 20 hours and we arrived and landed in Sydney and just not long after arriving in Sydney uh, Bernie went with Sash to the specialist and from that appointment found out that her daughter had stage 3 colorectal cancer and I tell you that next 48 hours was the worst 48 hours of my life as a dad seeing your daughter go through that and it was the toughest one of the toughest things I've ever had to be through and it's like and, and I wouldn't wish that upon anyone and then about five months ago, I was diagnosed with cancer as well. And I'm like, this, I don't know about you, I really, I was th thrilled to see the end of 2018. Some, some years aren't great years, you know. Maybe you had a great year in 2018. I'm, I'm praising God for you. But 2018 was a really tough year in so many ways. And my daughter has gone through chemo and radiation therapy, two surgeries. And uh, I just want to report now, jump to the future, or jump to the present. Uh, she's now got a, a clear report. Uh, and that's awesome. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and so have I. And uh, just... <laughs> I, had, I had another surgery about four weeks ago and... and, and uh, my, uh, my main surgeon came down to me before that surgery and he just got my blood results and he was beaming from ear to ear. He was this awesome guy. And he, I remember, because I was just having my anesthetic, the general anesthetic put in my arm and I remember he popped open the curtains and he popped in and said, I just got your blood results and it's completely clear of all, all cancer in, in your body. And so I, I was pretty happy. But, but to get to that place, it's one thing to get a great report but to walk through that stage, I'm telling you, there, there are treasures. And the treasure I found isn't the good report. That's a blessing. But the treasure is what God does through you and in you when you walk through that thing.
we discover things over here. I tell you, when I heard that report about Sash, I pray every morning. It's my thing. I see God. I go for walking walk. But my prayer life went to a whole nother level. My word life went to a whole nother level. Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, all that is within me, bless His holy name. Forget not all His benefits. Who forgives all my iniquity, heals all my diseases, redeems my life from the pit, crowns me with everlasting goodness and kindness, renews my youth like the eagle. I know that scripture really, really well. When I, when I began to read, all that is within me, bless His holy name. I said to that cancer, cancer, you're living within me, but you've got to bless the name of God. That, that cancer has to bow to the name of Jesus right now. I, I didn't know that before. I didn't, I didn't have that revelation before. I didn't have that sense of faith or confidence in that before. What gave me that? The trial brought that into me. The sense of we receive love and blessing and support that we pay from all over the world. The sense of re- being able to receive the love and support, including this church, by the way, who prayed for us. Thank you. And... and, and to, to, to humbly receive the love and support of people. That's a gift from God. That's a treasure. I tell you what, there are so many things that, 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 that exist in that trial. And if you're going through a trial right now, I'm telling you the presence of God wants to come close to you. He wants to reveal stuff to you that you, don't, and don't resist the trial. Just begin to walk through that trial humbly, confidently, boldly, knowing that the Holy Spirit's with you, knowing that Jesus is with you knowing that the presence of God is with you. And I'm telling you, the transformation that takes place in you and around you and for you is incredible. God's for you. Amen. The presence of God. I can feel the presence of God. Why don't we just stand to our feet right now? Could we just lift our hands in the presence of heaven? I can feel a, a, what's the word? I can feel like a, reservoir of the Holy Spirit in this church and it's growing the level is growing it was once at a out of ten it was once out of one and then a two and a three and then a four I'm telling you you're the Holy Spirit in this place God is growing the reservoir of his presence in this place and it's coming through the worship it's coming through the preaching And it's coming into your life. And every time you come into this house, God is not just building the reservoir of the Holy Spirit in the church. He's building it in you. And He's building and and you're then taking that back into your homes and into your marriages and into your families. I can see people, I can see families that have family members struggling, maybe a spouse, maybe a child. You can even go home this afternoon and and take with you the sense of God's presence. And it's going to literally affect. The Holy Spirit isn't just for a meeting. The Holy Spirit is for your home. And just as you're standing there with your hands raised, I want you to imagine, I want you to see yourself walking around your home with your hands raised and the Holy Spirit building in your home. And where there was once turmoil or strife or anger, or depression, or alcoholism, or whatever, or or, or tension between you and your kids, suddenly there's peace, and there's joy, and there's forgiveness, and there's healing, and there's restoration. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit wants to do that upon your life right now. Some of you are sick right now. Some of you are struggling with sickness, and you're struggling in your head about that. Is God for me? I want to tell you, God is for you. He's more for you in that trial, more for you in that sickness than He is at any other time in, the, in your life. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, come on, reach out to Him one more time, just as we finish. The presence of God touches every person here right now. Every life, Father. Whatever door is in front of, of each one of these people, whether it's the door of Jesus or the door of calling or door of enlargement or, or right now, maybe a door of trial. God, I pray your strength and your power and your anointing. And God, help us. Cause us to grow into the people that you've called us to be. In Jesus' mighty name, revival hit this place. Revival hit this church. A move of God hit this church right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. You can put your hands down right now. Just close your eyes right now. And I just want to offer people here today one last question. The most important question that I can ask any of us. Maybe some of you have never actually walk through the door of Jesus. 
It's never been in front of you. You've never known it was there. But right now I'm offering you, I'm, I'm allowing you and say, look, right in front of you now, for some of you, there's a door and it's a door you've never walked through before. It's called the door of Jesus. And as you open that door and say, I wanna walk through, I wanna, I wanna experience His love, His forgiveness, His grace. Maybe you're raised in church. Maybe you're raised around Christianity or religion, but this isn't that. This is a personal encounter with Jesus. That story I told earlier about me in Sydney Town Hall, I was raised in a Christian environment, but I never knew Jesus. And that day I received Jesus and my whole life changed. If you're here today and you've never walked through the door of Jesus or you know you need to go back and walk through that door again because you've fallen away from God, just with every eye closed, every head bowed, if you don't know Jesus, if you wanna come back to Jesus or if you wanna be sure that Christ is in your life, why don't you just slip your hand up right now and say, Mark, that's me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me right now. The Holy Spirit, if that's you, just slip your hand up and say, Mark, that's me. I want, I want to experience that grace and that love and that forgiveness. If you're here today and you don't know Him, thank you. That, thank you. Thank you down the back there. That's great. That's awesome. Anyone else? Anyone else? There's other people I know. If that's you, just slip your hand up and say, Mark, that's me. Pray for me. I want to know Christ. I want to be sure I have Christ. I want to experience that grace that you're talking about. There's anyone else? Just slip your hand up. And we're going to pray right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't we just close our eyes and we're going to pray this prayer together, particularly as a couple of people who raise their hand and say this loud to God after me. Dear God, I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die for me, to forgive my sins. And He rose again to give me new life. Right now, I receive forgiveness, grace, love, and a brand new life. As I walk through Jesus, I'm going to live for Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give the Lord a huge hand? That's right now.